Hello, hello. Welcome to Geg SoCal's monthly meeting. This is our monthly meeting for February 1st, 2022. And as you can see, we're in a new format. This is an asynchronous meeting coming to you tonight being dropped on our regular meeting day. I am Karen Lagola, co-founder and co-leader of Geg SoCal, and I'm joined tonight by my colleague, Nancy. And I'm Nancy Minicozzi, the other co-leader of GEG SoCal. So what's new in 2022? What's new is our format, for one. We will be trying uh, asynchronous meetings. We have grown. Our membership is at 630, which is fabulous. We've Yay. grown so big. And we're trying to find new ways to reach all of us, to have uh, everything that we do more accessible. So we'll be creating meetings this way. We're going to do them in 10 minute little chunks so that you can watch them at your leisure. And we're going to focus on one app at a time. The meetings will be available in our YouTube channel and you'll get an email through the group on the first Tuesday of every month. We also want to thank uh, Michael and May just officially for everything that you do for trainers and coaches and for the swag that you recently sent out. We really appreciate you and we're very thankful that you are so appreciative of us and all that we do. Um, another new change is that we are saying goodbye. We'll have a change in leadership. Stacy Klein is stepping down as a leader of. Geg SoCal. Some of you may know that Stacy took a new position in her district. And due to that, she just feels like she needs to lessen her load. So we are saying goodbye to Stacy. We will miss her, but we are sure that she will come back and drop in and participate in our gag. We'll definitely invite her to be a speaker at some point. Nancy and I will continue to support you. And with that, we have our Geg SoCal website, which has all of our past meetings and our present meetings. It has our calendar so that you can see when things are coming up. You can always email us at thegegsocal at gmail.com. Join our Google group if you haven't already and reach out to us on Twitter, either the Geg Twitter, my Twitter, or Nancy's Twitter. All these links will be in the description box below, so it will make it easy for you. Uh, we really do want you to keep in touch and let us know what you think. Yes. And if you haven't already, follow us. Follow all three of those Twitter accounts. All right. And with that, we are going to talk about some new features in Google Docs. Um, and we're also going to talk about some not so new things, but some things that we think are underused and should be used more. So to do that, I am going to um, share my screen. I'm going to show you the new compare feature. So this is a really great feature if you have some students in your class, they've written a paper, and sometimes you know, you've come across this where, hey, these things look a little bit too familiar to me. So now Google's made it really easy for you to share. If you come here right under Tools, you will see compare documents and I can click on that and then I can go and I can search documents from my drive and I can pull up the other document that I think is similar and then I can choose who the attributes differences go to and I can hit compare. And as you will see, what Google will do is they'll look at all of the comparisons, both these documents, and they will actually open a comparison in a separate doc. So it will come up and it's still loading. Yeah, once it's loaded, you'll see that it is uh, highlighted in red. It's uh, striked through where things are similar. And you can see on the side, the notes that I get. So this, in particular one, you can see that the students did have very similar and then they started to write over. And so here we are, we can go and we can look at what was the same and what was different in a very easy way. So that is the first Google Doc 
update. The next one is drafts. And so I'm going to show you, as you can see, look, I was able to put this fabulous draft here because I don't know about you, but these messages get sent around my district all the time with these like, this is a draft only, do not use this, do not use this. Well, now, instead of having this on top and having somebody use it, I can actually come up here to insert and I can insert a watermark. So I can search, I can already have my watermark here. If I wanna look for something else, I can go in and I can search either something on my drive, which is really handy. If I wanted to put a logo on here, my school logo, maybe I wanna put it on the back of things I'm sending home, or you can go straight out to a Google search and you can search an image for um, anything. I'll just use the word no there. We could just take a no, I can insert, and I can put that on the back of my so that is another cool, very cool, easy tool to use. And that was under insert. And the last thing I'm going to talk to you about is our the chip update. So chips, really fun, new, exciting tool that Google has added. They've been integrating a lot, right? So we already have seen that we could use the at function. So when I hit at, I can bring people up and I can attach them to my meeting. So that we've had, we've used that with comments too. But what's new is that when I actually bring at, I can then come and I can bring up any slide decks that correlate to this meeting. I can bring up notes that I want to add to this meeting. I can even come down here um, and I can insert a checkbox list. So I can say, you know, I can start my list of what I need to do. during my meeting. And the other thing that you can do, which is very cool, is you can actually bring up your calendar. Oops, I'm sorry. I just clicked off of that and on that at the same time. All right, let's come over here. Do, 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 do. So if I have this on my calendar, I can pull up my calendar event and add it so that it is also there. So now I have everything in one place. That was my school bell, I apologize. I have everything in one place, easy to go because Google's making it even easier for us to stay organized. Okay, I am actually gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna let Nancy share her screen so that she can talk about a few tools. Okay, so share my screen. So this is a table and you can see um, there are some things you'll see that first of all, one thing that they've updated is that they've allowed you to pin. So that means you can have the same row repeat at the top of different pages. If you hover over each row, you get some additional little things and I've pinned this row. So when I go to the next page, you can see that it's here as well. Um, the, whoops. Let's go back up to the top. Um, one thing that I really like is that you can go up to your format menu and go to table and go to table properties. And they've moved this menu over to the side to make it much easier to use. I can specify things that about my row, how high I want it to be, do I want to pin it? And you can pin more than one row if you'd like and allow row to overflow across pages. I personally don't like this because if you'll notice here, includes the 50 states and the District of Columbia, and then this part goes down to the next page. I don't like that. So I'm going to uncheck this and it should, well, I didn't have that row selected. I'll click, I'll just click the whole table. I'll just click in this row and I'll allow it to, and you'll see now that it's moved down. And so it's all on one page. And uh, the colors that you used to have to click and right click, and it was very annoying. Now you can select your table. You can do the colors over here. So I can change the background color of a cell if I'd like to point that out. You can also get these little handles 
The six dots are the handles, so you can move columns easily. You can sort. It's kind of tricky on this other monitor to get it, but you can click on those little lines and sort the table, either ascending or descending by a column. And if you have pinned the header row, it won't include that. So that's really nice as well. So there are a lot of things here. Um, we do want to keep this short, so I'm not going to show you everything that I love about it, but I encourage you to take a look. The other thing that I want to show you is about tables of contents. OK, so table of contents. If you have a very lengthy document, sometimes it's easier for you and your readers to click and go directly to a specific section. And the way you can make that easy for them is by inserting a table of contents. This is what I feel to be a very underused feature. So you can see I have some information here. And not only did I make this larger, but each heading, each thing that I want to include in my table of contents is actually heading one. So this is regular text. And if I wanted it to be a heading, I could just click down here. So to insert a table of contents, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right where I want it to go. And I'm going to click Insert Table of Contents. And you have two types. You can either have the page number or you can have blue links. And I'm going to choose these blue links. And it's going to insert the table of contents right here. When I, when I click on something, it'll take me right to that section of the document. Now, obviously, this document isn't very long, but if you have a long document, that's really helpful. You can also make subsections. This is heading one, but I could make it be heading two. You'll notice that my table of contents didn't change. It won't until you manually update it by clicking on it and then refreshing. And now you'll see that this is a subsection of that because coffee ipsum is heading level one and hippie ipsum is a subheading, it's heading level two. So this is really helpful. These links just go right to whatever it is that is the heading. So I encourage you to check out table of contents and try to use it next time you have a really long document. It makes things easy for you and your readers. Excellent. All right, that is our fabulous meeting for you today. I hope that you learned a lot about Google Docs. These are our next upcoming asynchronous meetings. March 1st, we'll do slides, calendar, forms, and sheets. Please let us know how you feel about our asynchronous meeting. We love your comments on our YouTube and reach out. Bye. Bye.